This video will detail the replacement of a potentiometer in the Tico E510 VFD using a solderless connection box and pot supplied by Gamaco Artisan Supplies. The first steps are to switch off your VFD and unplug it from the power point. It is critical that your VFD has been powered down and unplugged for at least five minutes prior to opening it up, so why not give it a clean while you wait? Once you're sure that your VFD no longer has power, you can go ahead and remove the cap of the existing potentiometer. This should just pull off to remove. Next, remove the nut using a 10 mm wrench and underneath it there will be a small metal washer and a Teflon washer. Put these aside for safekeeping, you'll need them later. You can now go ahead and unscrew the six screws that are holding the faceplate on your VFD. Once you get to the final screw, just be ready to support the faceplate. There are going to be several wires that are still connected between the faceplate and the main body and you're going to need to be careful of those as you gently remove the faceplate. Once you've been able to remove the faceplate, you're going to see that your old potentiometer still has a Teflon washer on it. Make sure you remove this, you're going to need to use that on your new potentiometer. Next, remove the cable that resembles a landline phone cable from the potentiometer circuit board. It should unclip easily. You'll note that the old potentiometer is connected to this circuit board by three wires. You're going to want to take note of the color of these wires because you're going to need to match them to your new potentiometer. Black, blue and red. Using some wire cutters, cut all three of these wires as close to the potentiometer as you can. This will give you as much wire to work with as possible. Once cut, you're going to want to remove the insulation 10 to 15 mil from the end of each wire. We recommend that you use some wire strippers to do this so that you don't damage any of the actual wire itself. Once you have all three wires stripped and ready, it's time to prepare the connection block and your new potentiometer. First of all, remove the existing nut and washer from your new potentiometer and put those aside. Next, we grab the connection block. The wiring needs to be a mirror. Red needs to be opposite red, blue opposite blue, and black opposite black. To open the connection port, simply click back the levers to 90 degrees. There will be some resistance as you do this, but it's completely normal. Now, simply insert each exposed wire into its relevant port, so red opposite red, blue opposite blue, black opposite black, and click down those levers. This will lock onto the exposed wire and create a solid connection. Take special care though to make sure that no uninsulated wire exposes outside of the connection block. Finally, double check those colors and make sure the wiring is correct as instructed. You'll note that the old pot has a guidance pin for its alignment when you put it in the housing. Your new pot does not have this you will simply need to hold it in place while you tighten it up to maintain that alignment. When you do put in the new pot, make sure you replace the internal Teflon washer. This is important for maintaining the IP rating for its dust and moisture resistance. Once the washer is on, put it through into the housing and then on the other side, replace the Teflon washer, then the steel washer and then the nut and tighten them up. Be sure not to over tighten them too far as you may squish your Teflon washer more than necessary. Next, you need to insert that landline phone cable back into the potentiometer circuit board before carefully replacing the faceplate uh, so that no wires are getting pinched. And you can then do up the six screws to resecure that faceplate to the housing. Once you've secured the faceplate with the six screws, move the potentiometer to the lowest position and then slip on the speed control knob so that the directional marker reflects the lowest position on your dial. Once you've done this, it's time to test it out. I tested mine out without engaging the grinder and instead just using the potentiometer itself to make sure that the display referenced the correct numbers. Uh, from 0 to 75 and that those were steady as they should be and once I was confident with that result 
I then engage the grinder from zero to 75 and back down again to ensure that the new potentiometer is working as it should with the unit. By this point, your grinder should be working perfectly. If you're still having issues or you have any questions about the process, please reach out to Gamico Artisan Supplies customer service team and they will do their best to help you through the process of replacing this potentiometer.